get. Get more tea, don't own the candle. You gotta get it. You gotta wanna buy it. It's true, man, and I. You gotta fucking try it, all right. Chapter 10, kids, picking up there again. The name of the chapter is called Cousins. <clears throat> Your name here, sponsorships. Chapter 10, Cousins. On a lighter note, Tim's desire for me to keep a promise was probably just insurance for me. Fuck! That I would no longer spray whipped cream or shaving cream into his open palm as he slept. Whereby I would then tickle his face to watch him smack the shit out of himself into a rude awakening. Eventually, I would submit to Tim's matured physical stature on more than one occasion for these infractions. Learning how to grapple with pain pleasure principle came early for me as a child. The amount of pleasure I received from being able to take advantage of my older cousin's invalid state while he slept was so worth the reward that more times than not, the payback, i.e. pain, didn't overshadow the joys of doling out the juvenile fun. Ah, so sweet, family is. I wonder who, what, where, and how I picked up on taking advantage of someone while they slept. All is fair in love and war, I suppose. I think it's only fair since I shared a nice little story about how my elder cousin Timmy taught me how to tie my shoes, blow bubbles, and of the importance of keeping one's promise. It is only fair to interject some quality sex education that I enjoyed learning from my other elder and equally pivotal playmate. You guessed it. Back to Thomas. Let's infuse a little caveat here. Daring to postulate that pl the plausibility that sexual molestation might in fact be a hand-me-down behavioral staple on war side of the family, in particular. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas was around eight years old. Making me about six and a half, this behavior was presumably something everyone was doing. <laughs> Ooh, child. Hmm, this thought is an example of how the obscure behavior of these folks my family still unfolds like a wretched onion. It just dawned on me now. My curiosity is overwhelming me as I ponder over all this crazy shit that happened on the weekends at my dad's when I was a child. I wonder what was really going on during the week while it was just Timmy and these two nitwits, Warren and Dr. Baker. I digress again. Flashback! Ta-da! The flash that I just received was from my ever-elusive memory bank. This withdrawal wielded a flash from when I was around 5 or 6, making Tim 15 or 16. I awoke. Bat, bait, buh. Bast, based, basted. In the warm rays of the Midwestern summer sun, beaming through this north-facing window into the master Gladstone, Missouri bedroom. I slid out of bed from a solid, uninterrupted night of sleep, I'm sure. That was a smart-ass comment. Anyway, I would then tromp out of the master bedroom as a child tends to do after waking up. And as I stumbled into the hallway, well, looky there, why don't ya? Lo and behold, just right across the hallway, old boy War was standing butt naked, completely transfixed, in his voyeuristic tractor beam-like state. This allowed me an opportunity to approach the scene. I got close enough to peer around the corner into the den where Tim regularly slept on the couch. There she was in all her boundless glory, the token doctor, Vicki Baker. Guess what, kids? You got it. She also just so happened to also be completely naked. Well, ain't that something? Yuck, yuck, and what do you know? Guess who she was sitting next to on the couch? That's right, kids, Timmy! Claps are overheard in the bozo audience that has become my personal, fictitious, mentalized fan base. Ha 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 ha! Oh, and what did Timmy have on? 
That's right, kids, it's birthday soon. This commercial has been brought to you by the makers of the banjo. Rick James has no idea how big of freaks these fuckheads were. God rest his soul. All in the family while on the couch. Touching, isn't it? I would love to do a photograph book of couches taken throughout the Midwest and put a simple question at the bottom of each picture. Hmm, I'm thinking a little postmodern adult choose your own adventure type coffee table book series where still images of couches are taken in color and black and white. And at the bottom of each picture, oh, and real quick, let me add that the book will be sold with a number two pencil. Here's the question. Did pedophilia of any sort ever take place on this couch? Circle yes or no. This is where you get to use the trinket attachment to this soon-to-be coffee table book craze. Yes, the infamous number two pencil that will be also included with each book. This flashback produces another flashback. Can't end this flashback just quite yet, because unfortunately it, this one, produced another one. How glorious! During the Root Troop years, 2001 through 2007-ish, which we will soon visit anyway, sometime during that period my dad and Vicky were attending the Las Vegas, Nevada car show. Hmm, I think it was probably 2003-ish, but again, I'm not sure. Although I'm guessing this because Dad was boasting that he and Vicky, kids, it's chapter 10, it's starting to hate up in here. Get the party started. The chapter is 10, it's called Cousins. I want you to go to the internet. I want you to access the world wide web, honey. And let this Bible of a book hit your skull. Let it hit you. Let it give you the curse of rock and roll of the dope. And if you don't like it, you can do one thing for me. You can go fuck yourself. Yeehaw, giddy <laughs> up.